But with the war over, the Marines were again deployed for foreign missions. Major and minor actions in Korea, Japan, Uruguay, Mexico, Colombia, the Hawaiian Islands, Argentina, Haiti, Nicaragua, Chile, North China, Panama, and more would occupy the Marines over the next several decades. In many of these cases, the combination of naval warships and the possibility of an amphibious landing were enough to maintain peace without a fight. In others, such as Korea in 1871 and Panama in 1885, the fighting exploded. In these actions, the sterling performance of the Marines did much to strengthen their reputation. In Korea, Marine Captain McLean Tilton led his men in amphibious assaults, as well as across rugged terrain in the capture of enemy forts. Captain W.S. Schley of the U.S. Navy wrote a description of the Marine Navy assault on the final fort known as the Citadel, which appeared in Harper's Weekly in 1894. Within the Citadel, the Korean forces were drawn up in columns of seven or eight deep from the south to the north, facing the point of the assault, with a double line of riflemen on the parapet behind them. The front rank was held by spearmen resting on their knees, with lawn lances poised to defend the column of infantry back of them, who opened a terrific fire upon those who first appeared on the parapet opposite. Captain Tilton and Lieutenant Brees with the Marines rushed in over the south wall and Master McLean over the north, and then the fighting in the Citadel was at close quarters. For 25 minutes, the combat was hand-to-hand -hand and most desperate, but the onslaught of bayonets with breech-loading muskets fired the moment the bayonets had pierced the front rank men, carrying down whole files behind, was more than human flesh and blood could be expected to stand. The enemy's lines first wavered and then gave way, and in great confusion and consternation, they sought to retreat over the crest of the hill towards the road up the river. The Marines continued to fight in conflicts large and small, wherever the nation sent them, always faithful. That attitude of fidelity around 1883 became the official motto of the U.S. Marine Corps. Semper fidelis, the Latin words meaning always faithful. Usually shortened to Semper Fi, the motto voices the loyalty of Marines to each other to their mission, to the Corps, and to their country. And the Marines would continue to demonstrate that loyalty in multiple conflicts as the 19th century came to an end and the 20th century took off. In the Spanish-American War, Marines fought in the five-day Battle of Guantanamo Bay. At one point during the battle, the Marines had requested that the USS Dolphin provide fire support by pouring artillery fire onto Spanish positions. But the Dolphin misinterpreted a signal regarding the location of the Spanish, and instead, their heavy guns fired into the Marines. Sergeant John Quick put himself in the crossfire in an attempt to send a new signal to the Dolphin. Stephen Crane, the novelist most famous for the Red Badge of Courage, was a war correspondent with the Marines and described what happened. Sergeant Quick arose and announced that he was a signal man. He produced from somewhere a blue polka dot neckerchief as large as a quilt. He tied it on a long, crooked stick. Then he went to the top of the ridge and turning his back to the Spanish fire, began to signal to the dolphin. Again, we gave a man sole possession of a particular part of the ridge. We didn't want it, but he could have it and welcome. If the young sergeant had had the smallpox, the cholera, and the yellow fever, we could not have slid out with more celerity. As men have said often, it seems as if there was in this war a god of battles who held his mighty hand before the Americans. As I looked at Sergeant Quick, 
wig-wagging there against the sky, I would not have given a tin tobacco tag for his life. Escape for him seemed impossible. It seemed absurd to hope that he would not be hit. I only hoped that he would be hit just a little, a little in the arm, the shoulder, or the leg. I watched his face, and it was as grave and serene as that of a man writing in his own library. He was a very embodiment of tranquility and occupation. He stood there amid the animal-like babble of the Cubans, the crack of rifles and the whistling snarl of the bullets. To say the least, a fight at close range is absorbing as a spectacle. No man wants to take his eyes from it until that time comes when he makes up his mind to run away. To deliberately stand up and turn your back to a battle is in itself hard work. To deliberately stand up and turn your back to a battle and hear immediate evidences of the boundless enthusiasm with which a large company of the enemy shoot at you from an adjacent thicket is, to my mind at least, a very great feat. One need not dwell upon the detail of keeping the mind carefully upon a slow spelling of an important code message. I saw Quick betray only one sign of emotion as he swung his clumsy flag to and fro, an end of it once caught on a cactus pillar, and he looked sharply over his shoulder to see what had it. He gave the flag an impatient jerk. He looked annoyed. Semper Fi, indeed. Sergeant John Quick would later be awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions that day. The Spanish-American War led to the Philippine-American War, and then the Boxer Rebellion in China. The Marines' successful handling of these two conflicts in the Pacific helped establish the capabilities of the fighting force and the nation. The Boxer Rebellion was an anti-foreigner uprising in China in 1900. Nationalists resented the Opium Wars, Christian missionaries, and other foreign influences in China. In June 1900, the Boxers began attacking foreign embassies. But Marines from the U.S. and other countries had been sent to reinforce the embassy guards. One of the U.S. Marines was Private Daniel Daly, he was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions in single-handedly defending a wall against repeated attacks. Private Daly would later become one of only two Marines to be awarded the Medal of Honor twice for two separate actions. He received his second Medal of Honor for actions against Haitian rebels in 1915, now as a gunnery sergeant. His citation for that action reads, Gunnery Sergeant Daly was one of the company to leave Fort Liberty, Haiti for a six-day reconnaissance. After dark, on the evening of the 24th of October, while crossing the river in a deep ravine, the detachment was suddenly fired upon from three sides by about 400 cacaos, concealed in bushes about 100 yards from the fort. The Marine detachment fought its way forward to a good position, which it maintained during the night. Although subjected to continuous fire from the cacaos, at daybreak, the Marines, in three squads, advanced in three different directions, surprising and scattering the cacaos in all directions. Gunnery Sergeant Daly fought with exceptional gallantry against heavy odds throughout this action. But despite these awards for valor, Daly may be best remembered for words he shouted to his men during the Battle of Bello Wood in World War I. Come on, you sons of bitches! Do you want to live forever? Following the Boxer Rebellion, Marine deployments were included in Panama, the Cuban classifications, Morocco, Veracruz, Santo Domingo, and the so-called Banana Wars in Haiti and Nicaragua. In these conflicts, and over the course of decades, the role of the Marines shifted somewhat. Although still tightly connected to the Navy, the Marines were proving themselves more and more as an always ready expeditionary force. The Navy, of course, 
makes the Marines rapid deployment and amphibious assaults possible, but with the growth of the steel Navy and the far more professional modern U.S. Navy sailors, the traditional Marine duties of guarding against boarding from another ship and maintaining discipline among the crew became less and less relevant. The Marines were becoming the nation's stopgap military force, the first fighters ready for immediate deployment to take control of an area and hold it until the larger army forces can be organized and deployed. The lessons learned in actions to this point would pay off soon as America was drawn into the storm of World War I. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.